What's up, everybody? It's Thursday night, and that means it's time to talk about movies. Welcome to the P.O. Vincent podcast here on the River's Edge Network. I am your host, Vincent Didiano, and with me, of course, is the human megaphone, Eric Williams. Eric, how you doing this week, buddy? I'm doing very well, Vincent. He's being so modest this week, ladies and gentlemen. No, I'm, pr- I am. I'm proud of him. I, I absolutely am a, a human megaphone. <laughs> I, there, There is... there. I, I was... Uh, as many of us know, it was just Thanksgiving, and I was I was uh, back in Cleveland visiting family. I did a show. Uh, I did a show at a, a church, and uh, afterwards, a number of people were like, "Oh, you you were uh, very funny," and a number of people were like, "How raw is your throat gonna be tomorrow?" <laughs> like, I mean, you you. I feel like you've seen me go micless at at multiple. Oh yeah! No no yeah. I'll, I'll never forget, like we've talked about before, like before, listen, Christian's wedding from last month. Man. <laughs> you were like, well, we, I forgot about that already. That I'll was never amazing. will. We, that was amazing. We needed to get the crowd's attention. There you were. Like, I did it, and people were kind of like, who's this guy? And then you did it, and I'd be like, who's this guy that I'm listening to? Like, there was that kind of a difference. Like, there was, <laughs> Like you're you're loud, and I, I don't I don't mean that. And like, oh, you're like I mean, no, like you you have a voice that can carry well. Like you <laughs> you are not someone who's like hey, what's up? Like, and people are like Vincent, speak the fuck up. You just you know you, you're like hey, like I'm Italian and relatively I normal. I am. I used to be a lot louder when I was a kid. I was I, I didn't realize it was, but I was really loud. And my friends always tell me to like be. I didn't realize I was being loud. I thought that was normal. Like. <laughs> I'm Vince as a kid as an adult. Yes, we reversed. When he was a kid, he was super quiet. No, then... I've always been loud. <laughs> <laughs> no, in fact, it was weird because there were uh, I had, like some old family friends and a number of uh, like uh, friends who are around my age there. Uh, and they're kind of like, yeah, yeah, you were loud. <laughs> but you've always been that way. And I got to be like, yeah, you know, like I, I, I got told as an adult... To use an indoor voice by someone younger than me when we were outside. <laughs> God damn it, Eric. We can hear you from the next county over. It spooked the cows or I don't know. Uh, <laughs> there's probably like farm animals in West Virginia I'm scaring right now. <laughs> oh, man, yeah. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, we were off last week because of Thanksgiving. Um, I feel like I feel like they they know that. Yeah, I feel like yeah. they at least know. I, I need to call my mom and wish her a happy birthday. What, what do you want to do right now? I mean, I I, I could if, 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 if you Let's... really really want me to. <laughs> but, uh, Go give her. Let the people know that you're a good son. Let the people know. I mean, I don't know that I'm a good son, but I'm like I I need to call. Let my the people mom. know. Let the people know you're a half decent son. Let them know. And wish her a happy birthday. It. it was sometime this do week. It. Dude. My brother, uh, my brother did text me. I'm generally uh, considered the one who cares more about people's feelings <laughs> between us, us siblings. But he actually messaged me and he was like, "Is mom's birthday today?" I was like, <laughs> it's today or tomorrow. I know it sounds like you don't know your mom's birthday. Her birthday is right around Thanksgiving, so it's one of those where it's like because it's like oh, sometimes it's Thanksgiving, but sometimes it's not. So I know it's like one of two days, which was either yesterday or two days ago. Okay, do you not want to give her happy birthday just in case you're way off? And she she Um, yells at you, you son of a bitch, it was three weeks ago. (laughs) Still wearing that fucking Doctor Who hat? Oh, this is good shit. What is she going to answer? What's going to happen? Is it just going to go that Hey, Mom, happy birthday. Why, thank you. That was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I know. Uh, did Chris wish you a happy birthday? I have not heard from him. You did? Chris didn't contact you? He okay. says getting very loud. Chris actually, like, messaged me to be like, hey, is, like, today Mom's birthday? And I think it was actually two days ago, and then I, I forgot yesterday. I'm actually calling you live from the podcast show uh, I co-host with my good friend uh, Vince Didiano right now. So you're doing it from your podcast show? 
Oh yeah, we're yeah. live. Yeah, we're, we're we're live in the studio. I have you on speakerphone. Uh, I am holding the phone directly next to the microphone. <laughs> I I will call I, I may call you later today tomorrow afternoon I'll give you a call this weekend I love you a happy birthday I hope it was wonderful uh, and that you were able to find some uh, low sugar low wheat dessert to enjoy thank you welcome bye bye <laughs> oh, spreading the love here on the P.O. Vincent podcast <laughs> my mom's a diabetic so I gotta but I know she loves her chocolate like no it's it's so the diabetes is not great, but it does mean that whenever I go home, any food that has sugar in it, I can pretty much steal. Like every time I go home, I come back with like chocolate and honey and like all all sorts of yeah. I got a feeling you go home often. Just like... <laughs> I, I, you know, I, every every couple months or something. It's it's it depends on the occasion. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I'd probably do the same, so I ain't going to fault you. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this is a movie podcast. So, <laughs> And I'm not I'm not saying Eric took us off track. I, I threw him onto that track. I flipped a big fucking switch, and he veered off into the Happy Birthday Mom track. But now we got to get into things. So we were off last week, and last week a ton of movies came out. A ton. Out. Yeah, a uh, ton. Uh, uh, a couple movies came out this week, but um, honestly nowhere near as interesting. Vince didn't give a shit about it. I, I, did I not really didn't. Uh, not care at all. Uh, well, the possession of Hannah Grace is like, oh, yeah, another possession movie. But the catch this time is that she dies. Ooh. <laughs> That's the whole catch. Like, she's still possessed after she's dead. And then she, like, uh, kills the people in the morgue or something. I don't know. So I don't care. I'm with horror movies, but I think, like, supernatural horror movies are, like, my least favorite. Because they are the ones that are, like, where the... Plot matters the least. <laughs> like, no, they're just gonna be like, oh yeah, there's this supernatural evil that just like, hey, see, I mean, like, I think generally, in my opinion, Stephen King does it pretty well, but uh, those stories are just like, oh, like, here's someone who cared about something or was very religious, and now here's an evil thing and badness. <laughs> oh, why? Who knows? God hates us. Go watch another movie. Thanks for the thirteen dollars. Eric, we need to get you to Hollywood and write these scripts up. I mean, that that's it. There you go. <laughs> you can just take that and add pieces to it like it's a Mr. Potato Head. Uh, but anyway, time to get into our first movie, a movie that I was uh, really looking forward to. Ladies he and gentlemen. We talked about it before. He's excited. Yes, he we, said to me, he said, Eric, I, I am really excited to see this movie about boxing. I really think that Killmonger can win the title. <laughs> And that he and Valkyrie's kid is going to be an even better boxer. That's right. I took a review about Creed 2 and just turned it into Marvel. Now Vince is going to talk about the actual movie while I interrupt him like a jackass. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about Creed 2. <laughs> uh, you ranting motherfucker. Put the poster up on for the people to see. Let them see Michael B. Jordan in his Jordian glory. He actually I'm... does look very like Michael Jordan without a B right there. Okay. <laughs> no, it looks like I just made the game winner. Oh! Ah. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, this is the sequel to the uh, very popular uh, spinoff movie Creed, uh, following the um, story of Adonis Creed, uh, the son of Apollo Creed, the first you know rival Rocky had in the original Rocky movies. Um, in the last movie, we see the the character. Uh, decide that he's becoming a boxer. He convinces Rocky to be his trainer, and he's like trying to prove to himself that he's just not some mistake of his father, that he wasn't some one night fling, that he was cheating, and you know, uh, and you know, it was a really good movie. Great performances all around. Michael B. Jordan, Tessa Thompson, Sylvester Stallone. Sylvester Stallone got a lot of praise for his performance in the last film, uh, to the point where there's a lot of Oscar buzz around him regarding it. Um, uh, he didn't. I don't even. I don't think he was nominated. I could be wrong. It was a few years back, but uh, I, I definitely know he didn't win. But regardless, it was we great. We discussed, performance. you know, you know, he uh, won an Oscar for the original film, right? Uh, yeah. What was it for writing? He he. Yes, he won it for screenwriting. Even though I forget if we talked about it on here, if I looked this up, I feel like that's one of those things where like he. No, wait, you you were telling. Didn't he actually like argue a bunch with the studio? I can't remember. 
I wanted to, like, they wanted to buy it, but they were like, yeah, we, we want to buy it, but we're going to have, like, someone else play Rocky. Oh, no. I, I, I This is information. This is new information to me, man. Like, and Stallone was like, no. <laughs> they're like, and they're like, aren't you, like, starving and stuff? And he was like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm starving and stuff, but I'm going to be, I'm gonna still be even hungry if you don't give me this movie. <laughs> I'm you, hungry for that main role. <laughs> you doing Rocky is one of my favorite <laughs> things. And, and to be clear, I, I mean an impression. That wasn't some sort of weird innuendo. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> but anyway, so the plot for Creed 2 is that uh, Adonis, also called Donnie, sometimes just called D, whatever, you know, it's, each character that's close to him in the movie has his own little way of talking to him. Um, he's, uh, it's been a few years since the first movie, and he's risen to the top. He is the fucking champ now. He's, you know, he's done it. He's, he's made it all the way up there to the top. Heavyweight champ. But then out of nowhere, Ivan Drago, the rival to Rocky from the fourth film, the man that killed Apollo Creed, Adonis' uh, father, reappears. And apparently he's got his own son, Victor, who's been coming up in the Russian Boxing League. And he has challenged Adonis for his title. So right off the bat, now this is all stuff revealed in the trailer. Right off the bat, that's actually really interesting, you know, because, I mean, right off, it gives us so much emotion and drama to work with with these characters because it's, you know, it, it, it's so, uh, you know, Adonis had a lot to prove in the first one, not mostly, you know, to himself, you know, and to, now to have to face the, uh, the, the son of the man that killed his father, I mean, that can really mess with your goddamn head. And, yeah, it does, and it just also this, and um, also now in this movie he's got the pressure because he's no longer that oh the the son of Creed is it, as he lives up to the name you know the title and all that he's not the underdog anymore. No, now he's got all this pressure from fans, the news media, you know, other people around the boxing league. So that's getting to him. It's now you know he, he's got to feel the pressure from everything going on around, plus the fact that his relationship with Tessa Thompson's character Bianca has grown tremendously since then. You know, as you see in the trailer, they got like a baby on the way, and it's just really ups everything else. And, and now the Punisher's kid shows up to to <laughs> murder him in the ring. Oh, that's right. I'm not going to stop with the Marvel references. We have three different actors in this movie yes. who have been in a, a film at least based off of a Marvel Marvel. Well, product. no, we got we got four. We got Whoa! four. Oh, Mike, you're right. Because Michael B. Jordan was Killmonger, Sylvester Stallone was in Guardians of the Galaxy I Volume Two. About that, Tessa Thompson you know. was Valkyrie, as you already said, and Dolph Lundgren was the Punisher in that one movie they did back, like in the eighty-five. No, a little no, a little. Yeah, late eighties, really early nineties, but that was before the MCU. That was just when. Really yeah, that was really bad. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't that. Great. Punisher is hard one to get down. They really didn't nail it until uh, John Bernthal took the role. Though. Like I, f I feel like whoever made the Ben Affleck Daredevil movie or uh, the uh, Electra movie, when people were like, "Oh, this isn't good," they should have just been like, "Have you seen the Dolph Lundgren Punisher?" Dad, I haven't seen it in years, but I like I remember he even I remember in the movie had like these knives that had like little skulls on the on the end of them. Like it's <laughs> bad. Yeah. Um, like it, it's not quite the room bad, no. But but it's it's at least like it might not be. Oh hi, Mark. But it's at least like oh hi. <laughs> but anyway, so the first, so Gowen's characters. Actually, I'm going to talk about the. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> oh, there, buddy. Care? Whoa, whoa, Did that come whoa. through the mic? I just burped. Hey, wait, it seems, seems seems like we got a seems like we got a boxing match going on in <laughs> Vince's stomach. Oh. Um, bam, bam, bam. Too many fucking ramen noodles and cookies. <laughs> they can't I'm coexist so... together. But anyway, so I'm like, like one of us is a superior simple carbohydrate. I don't know. It's top ramen. I don't know how superior it is. But, <laughs> but anyway, so we're going to start. I want to talk about the antagonist in the film. So we're going to start with uh, Ivan Drago, who is once again played by uh, Dolph Lundgren. Um, his son, Victor, is played by a man named Florian Montenue, Montenu. Uh, Dolph Lundgren is like... His acting career reminds me of like how, how seven-footers used to be in the NBA. It's just like, oh, like... You're seven feet tall? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can play in the NBA. Dolph Lundgren, it was like, wait, you're like a massive Eastern European in the middle of the Cold War? Oh, yeah, yeah, you can be every bad guy in everything. Pretty much. 
But anyway, so we follow up with Stol- with his character uh, Ivan Drago's story. Apparently, after the events of Rocky IV, when he lost the match, um, he basically was discredited and shamed by uh, the Russian government. Because remember, in that movie, they really pushed him up as like he is the epitome of what it is to be Russian and all this stuff. And since then, yeah, he he was discredited. He he basically was uh, k- uh, kicked out because he was like a in their army or something, a soldier. Um, now he lives somewhere in the Ukraine. He's poor, you know, and just his whole life went to crap. Even his wife leaves him. It's just, and he just basically had to raise his son. And you have understandably, his... he did lose the Cold War for Russia. He did. It was. It all came down to that one match. Just mm-hmm. said, you know. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, uh, that's why Gorbachev tore down the wall. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? We don't need it anymore. Just wait. That was. Wasn't that Germany? I don't know. Not it was great. Germany. <laughs> Let me finish my character analysis, motherfucker. <laughs> anyway, so I really like Dolph Lundgren's character. It's not just simple revenge. They give good reasons why he is. Because he really, because like he, he, he basically had everything. He had, a you know, fame, glory, and a ton of respect. And that's really what he's chasing here. And he's basically using his son to regain the, this respect and glory that he lost. And his son, like his character in the, in the previous film, Rocky IV... Um, doesn't really talk a lot, but you see in the guy's face all the time that he's just angry and frustrated because he feels the pressure of, you know, like, uh, like, off from his dad because this is really, like, all his dad cares about. He wants to get back on top, and if they beat Adonis Creed, they'll regain that respect from these, you know, from... So, I, I so you know, it, it's I like how they added that because it really could have just been simple as, you know, you know, they, they, they he could have just made, like, I lost everything after I lost to you. Now my son will destroy your new prodigy. And they could have just left it at that. We probably couldn't accept it. But they add, they show, like, the crappy apartment him and his son live in. And you can see his son, like, he, he wants to, like, his son is a, is a powerful fighter. He's even taller than Dolph Lundgren. This guy is, like, like, like I got to say, four or five inches taller than Dolph. So, you know, and he's way bigger than Michael B. Jordan. So it's definitely that, you know, got that, uh, um, oh, crap. Dave, uh, David and Goliath thing kind of going on. But I like how they, like, develop, uh, you know, I don't want to say villains because they're not evil people. They're just people who just grew up in a shit environment and, you know, not, you know, and it, just, it sucks. Um, so let's move on to Sylv- Sylvester Stallone. Um, as it's indicated in the trailers, you know, um, uh, Adonis is challenged by the Dragos and he wants to fight them because people are saying, like, oh, you know, are you really a champ? Could you beat this guy? You know, that he's punching. And he goes to Rocky, and Rocky really doesn't want to train him. He doesn't want Adonis to fight this guy at all because Rocky holds himself accountable for Apollo dying because he didn't throw in the towel before Victor, like, beat him to death. And, you know, because uh, Apollo told him not to. And, and He's afraid if they do this again, he doesn't want that responsibility. He doesn't want to be in that position to make that choice as to whether to throw in the towel again or not because he cares about Adonis. Adonis is like a surrogate son to him, and, you know, they, they are family. So you really feel Rocky's position in this movie. It's a, He's in a tough spot. He wants Adonis to be the great champ that he knows Adonis is. It's not – he doesn't – but he, but he's like you know scarred by that because you know him and Apollo they became really good friends you know um, and he you know he, he probably feels like someone be- call them friends someone call them lovers <laughs> say what you will but they became close they, they definitely no, they were, became close yeah yeah they came over to each other's houses Rocky introduced Apollo to his robot you know they were they were tight they were tight introduced Apollo to his robot. <laughs> That happened in a movie. <laughs> oh, I'm sure it did. Yeah, we just didn't see it on screen. Yeah, so uh, I really feel so for, so for Sylvester Stallone in this film, you know, and he's also going through the fact that, as it was brought up in the previous Creed film, that he still has not spoken to his actual son in many years. Um, some of you might remember in the in uh, the movie Balboa, his son was played by Milo Ventimiglia. I hope I pronounced his last name correctly. Um, and uh, and it, it, it's established that, it, that it, in universe is still the same actor playing that character. Um, so he's going through that where you know he doesn't want to lose the, the son he has in Michael B. Jordan, but at the same time he's like finding having trouble finding the courage to like reconnect with his blood son. So there's a lot going on with Rocky's character in this film, and I, I enjoyed it. Um, Tessa Thompson also returns as Bianca, uh, the love interest, and as I said, we see in the trailer that they're 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 pretty much in a fully committed relationship at this point. They've got a child on the way, life is moving forward, and she's having trouble with you know Michael B. Jordan's character because he's going he goes into this fight with uh, Victor Drago like 
full steam ahead and you can tell that he's not really thinking that he's letting all these outside influences get to him and she's having trouble you know she loves him she's standing by with him but it's really difficult because he's like a very proud man and you know that you know that can be tough to deal with sometimes so i and that's the thing but the relationship between their two characters i believe the whole time i think michael b jordan and tessa Thompson have great chemistry together and uh, it really works a lot for me um as far as Michael B. Jordan goes, once again, he puts in a really great performance. Uh, you can you you feel it just like you know the uh, the uh, tension with him and the inner turmoil he's going through. Like he wants to prove that he's got he's a champ, but he doesn't feel like he's the champ, and he feels like you know he's feeling like if he's to prove it, he has to beat this guy. And you know uh, it, it's it's really and I really like that he just I don't know, I Michael B. Jordan. I just see this guy continue to make uh, being great films and great performances for years and years to come. And um, I don't know if there will be a Creed three. If there is, I'd, I'd be down for it. Uh, I saw in an interview. Uh, I can't. I didn't, didn't get a chance to finish reading the whole article. But Sylvester Stallone's a little iffy on if he would do a Creed three. Um, I I don't know. I, I kind of get that. I mean, he's been a part of this franchise since he was a young man, and sometimes you gotta know when to bow out. And, well, and maybe he's I, what? What was the weird superhero and that superpower movie that he was in like five or six years back? Uh, I think I think it was Chronicle, maybe. Oh, Michael B. Jordan. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was his like first big role. That yeah, Chronicle. Where uh, my uh, uh, three t- uh, high schoolers uh, friends, they find this hole and it's got some kind of like rock that's glowing and it gives them uh, telekinetic powers. And Michael B. Jordan was one of the the, uh, the three teens in that movie. Yeah, that was his uh, like first like notable role, at least one that I I can remember. It's a good movie, by the way. If you guys haven't seen the movie Chronicle. Um, it, it some people call it a superhero movie, and it kind of is because it definitely has elements of superhero films in it. But it is more of a sci-fi kind of deal than anything. I would call um, it a superpower movie more than a superhero movie. I I can get down with that description, man. I I think that yeah, we'll call yeah what Eric said. <laughs> I like what Eric's got. Sorry, uh, but anyway, yeah. So anyway, uh, the only problem I will have. Uh, the only problem I have with the film is that in some of the story pl- uh, plot elements is kind of predictable. Um, that's a bit of a problem, not a huge problem. If like, there's some things you just like, this is going to happen, and that's going to lead to this. Time and out. This. Time out. Time out. You're telling me that after seven movies, you can kind of predict some of the things that are going to happen. Yes. <laughs> but anyway. Like, I mean, no, eight movies for a franchise, that is actually, that's just an impressive thing in and of itself. Yeah. Like, eight movies, not a single reboot. Like, and you know, Rocky's been in the movie the entire time. It's not like in the first movie, like, you know, his mom was the boxer, and then at the end of the film, he like pops out of a lake and drags the sole survivor down. No. He's been in all of the films. That yeah. was a bad Friday the 13th joke. <laughs> it's okay. We shall forgive you this time. <laughs> um, but yeah, and oh, and and the boxing matches, the the, uh, the fight scenes, they're great. The first one, in, there's several throughout the film because we have to see uh, Donis boxing in, in, in some matches and we also see Victor boxing and then we have them, the, them fighting each other. Um, the matches, uh, the, there's several of them. As we go along, they get better and better and better. It's kind of like a buildup, you know, and the final fight between uh, Donis and Victor is awesome. You feel every punch. The pacing is great. The choreography is great. I really enjoyed the final fight. Um, uh, very nice. Uh, so, yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, do I recommend Creed 2? I think it's pretty obvious at this point. Yes. <laughs> I recommend Creed 2. Uh, I think it's another great outing for the Rocky franchise. And all around, all the actors uh, did great. Lots of great writing. Um, none of the dialogue felt bad, which that, that, that those even a good movie had that one moment of bad dialogue that kind of take you out for a minute and you gotta like get back in. But no, everything was nice. Um, uh, so uh, kudos to director Stephen uh, Capel Jr. And uh, with that, we're gonna move on to our next movie review. Which... I'm very curious about this. You are okay. I am. Like I, I kind of I expected. I expected you to give Creed. I expected you to like Creed too, and that like even even if it wasn't like amazing, like you should be like, oh, there was some good. Like I, 
Stallone knows what he's doing here. Like, and Michael <laughs> B. Jordan's fantastic. This next one is a movie that they seem to make like every five years. And I am skeptical about this one because it is starring uh, the Kingsman and what is clearly just uh, angry Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about the new Robin Hood. So this new movie is directed by <laughs> a, a, a person, Otto Bathurst, who directed also directed Peaky Blinders, ah. some episodes of Black Mirror. Did you oh. ever watch Peaky Blinders? No, I have not. Are you are you a mob organized crime guy at all? Kind of. I mean, you know, in my household, you know, whenever the family would get together, the Diano clan, you know, one of the Godfather movies would be on the television, you know, that or a Goodfellas. You know, it was interchangeable. It was interchangeable. I've heard very good things about Peaky Binders. I haven't seen it myself yet. Uh, but yeah, very, very good things. Yeah. Um, so this movie stars Taron Edgerton as Robin of Loxley, a.k.a. Robin Hood in the classic, uh, you know, role. Um, he's joined by Jamie Foxx, Ben Mendelsohn, and Eve Hewson. Uh, as well as Jamie Dornan, who most people will know from the uh, the Twilight, uh, not Twilight, sorry, the uh, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey movie. <laughs> I said Twilight because the Fifty Shades of Grey movies are based on really horrible Twilight fan fiction, so I think that's where my little my little slip came from. But anyway, so this movie is basically what you kind of know from the uh, Robin Hood story. Rob, uh, Robin of Loxley, one of the uh, 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 British lord, um, is sent off to the fight in the Crusades, and when he gets back, he finds that. Um, his home, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sherwood, whatever, is uh, now uh, basically everybody is poor and starving, and it's under the con- tyrannical control of the. Uh, oh wait, hold on, clicked on the wrong thing there. Sorry about that. Uh, Sheriff of Nottingham, Nottingham. That's where I was looking for Nottingham. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so, um, initial impressions of the film. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so so sometimes you just like see a preview for a movie and you're like, Ugh. yeah. First of all, like okay, there was what the Kevin Costner movie. Yes, in the nineties. Yeah, in, in the nineties. That's the one I grew up on. And uh, let's see. Uh, then of course there's Robin Hood Men in Tights, but that's a parody, also in the '90s, and I believe Dave Chappelle's first movie appearance. Probably, I love that film. That film is awesome. It holds up, people. Arguably the best Robin Hood movie. Uh, then what? There, there was a. Uh, there was the uh, Russell Crowe. Russell Crowe one? one, yeah, called Robin Hood, which was early thousands. Yeah. Oh, that that was like from like around somewhere around 2010. I could look it up, but. Okay. We don't got we, we don't got time to go through the history of So this movie, when I saw the trailer, I was concerned. Um, <laughs> so let's go through something that's a, you know it's bad when you like. And I don't I'm not one of those people. Let me explain myself. I'm not one, I'm not one of those people who like watches a trailer and like I instantly know now whether this movie is shit or gold. I'm that person. I don't want to be that guy because I've seen movies like I've seen like mo- like crap movies with great trailers like you know uh, uh, Clash of the, the Clash of the Titans remake great trailer mediocre film or Suicide Squad great trailer mediocre film you know I mediocre don't... might be too much credit it get mediocre at first viewing second <laughs> viewing ugh. but anyway um no uh so I. Okay, so here's one thing. I mean, there's a lot of problems. They are trying to make this movie, this Robin Hood tale, into like a kind of superhero film. It really is. Let's go for a few things. Like before we even get the characters or anything, I, I can't believe we're gonna talk. We don't usually don't talk about this, but this is like like we gotta talk about this because it's so notable in the film. We need to talk about the costume design, people. You can see this in the trailer without seeing the movie. The costume design is medieval materials and fabrics with modern day fashion. Ben Mendelsohn, who is a really good actor, who keeps starring in movies that I think are okay. He was the bad guy in Rogue One. He was also the bad guy in Ready Player One. Coincidence. Uh, And uh, he really is a good actor. He plays villains very well. He plays the sheriff of Nottingham. And in this movie, he's like 
There's nothing medieval or anything <laughs> about. He's wearing a, a, a suit and jacket. That's where he's the whole film. It's like a long coat, and it looks like something that somebody would be wearing today, except for like the materials are a little. I mean, one's like a gray leather jacket. I don't know. Everybody's dressed like that. Everybody, even one of the characters, like um, Eve Hewson, who plays Marion, aka Maid Marion. She's in this version of Robin Hood. She's not like British royalty. She's not. She's not royalty at all. She's actually just a commoner that Robin happens to fall in love with, and he doesn't care. Um, and she's supposed to be one of the poor people, and for some reason she gets invited to a party with uh, the other nobles because she holds political favor with the commoners. And for someone who's supposed to be one of the poor people, she comes in dressed very nicely. Like she's at a, like, like a party for supermodels or something, and she's got like makeup on, like like lipstick lipstick. Not like back, like I know back in the day they had like different kinds of lipstick, like they use like berry juice or, or something like that. But it is straight up fucking lipstick with like black liner on the on the out of it. Like everybody's dressed like they're from now. And they don't and and I I I I, I don't like it. I just I it, it, like it's so obvious and it reminds me of that King Arthur movie from like last year, King Arthur like Legend of the Sword where they had modern tones and stuff to it, like when that movie where Arthur, Arthur, he's not like a squire to a knight that doesn't realize he's actually the king. He's like, well, he, he like, he grows up in a brothel and he becomes a local gangster and he's like, he acts like, you know, like a, like a, like a mud. And like, it, this, same, this movie has the same problem. It's just like everything is like, it's modern aesthetics all over the joint. This all over. This movie looked like, hey, what if Green Arrow took the time yes. machine from Legends of Tomorrow and traveled to the Middle Ages? Yeah, no, th this show, this movie, definitely has elements of Arrow in it. It definitely has elements of Batman because in this movie, Robin, in order to, like, get close to the Sheriff of Nottingham, like, in most of the, the Robin Hood legends, Robin comes back, he makes his presence known, he, he makes them know, like, you guys are crap. I'm going to fight you. I'm going to be in the woods. When you guys come through with some, like your money stuff, I'm going to steal, give to the get, steal from rich, give to the poor. In this one, he acts like he basically pulls a Batman. He acts like he's like a stuck up, conceited rich boy, and he's just trying to get it in like he's like playing the rich boy part, like the alter identity thing. They really want this movie to be a superhero film. It's so blatantly like they, they want Batman with Green Arrow mixed in there. I feel like they just always feel the need to do something with Robin Hood because they don't uh, want to admit that, like, for whatever reason, America just loves films about a violent socialist. <laughs> Guess. <laughs> like, I, I, I don't know. That's, that's my best yeah. guess because that's, that's what Robin Hood is, right? I, like, I guess so. I don't know. I, I don't. Uh, distribution uh, of wealth, willing to fight for it, you yeah. know, like yeah. the sort of the sort of guy where like uh, the king's like King Richard's like, oh, you're a snowflake. And Robin's like, bam, bam, yeah. snow this yeah. arrow. Oh, shit. I, I got to mention this real quick. I got to mention that uh, this is like I, kind I, not really a spoiler because I'm not going to say which character, but by the end of the film, this is how much they're borrowing from Batman. One of the characters in the film gets half his fucking face burnt, and I'm like, is Two Face in Robin Hood now? <laughs> I'm not even fucking around. That happens. One of the characters gets their face burnt, like just the wood half. The Does wood it half. Their personality. Do they go from good to evil after that happens? Not really. They just kind of more show their true colors and stuff like. But it's like so plain. Like this is Batman Begins. <laughs> This is Batman kinda, Begins with kinda, a little Dark Knight. Don't you mean Batman and Robin? Like, I mean, uh, Two Face wasn't in Batman Begins. Uh, the, the, he was in the Dark Knight. And... Little, little sprinkling of Dark Knight in there. Little okay, sprinkling. okay. Just, like a, like a, just like enough a... to give you Aaron Eckhart. I got yeah. it. I got it. Uh, just like that, that guy who, like, remember that in the memes, he pinches the salt. Yeah. He's like, oh, he's got the glass. You know, like, anyway. But yeah. Um, I, I, and this movie has, like, oh, Jamie Foxx plays Little John. <laughs> wait, wait, okay. This actually had... Ha that a makes no sense because didn't they combine two characters? Okay, so I'm not no, no, that's it. Yeah, Jamie Foxx is Morgan Freeman's character from the Costner film, merged with Little John. They don't call him Little John. What? Yes, he like he has like he's you know he's from the Middle East. He has his name, but he's like what? In, in your language, English, I would be called John, and I'm like, okay. 
And he plays the mentor figure. Like, he shows, like, even though Robin Hood was a soldier in a crusade and he would have learned some skills, like, he's an archer in the crusade. They, they, oh, my God. There's a scene. It's like, like, it's like, like fucking Black Hawk Down or shit where they show um, uh, uh, Robin Hood in the crusades and he's, like, with his, like, his unit. And they talk, like, modern modern military people. And they're, like, all, like, oh, oh take cover. And, oh, we're going to sneak through. Like, da, 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 da. And, I, and, and their outfits, like, their armor... He's got this like sandy gray color to it. Like you see like modern soldiers and they're you know, got that sandy gray to blend into the desert. It's like once again this aesthetic thing, I know I already talked about it, but it just bugs me. And I'm not kidding. There's a mach- there's a large machine gun crossbow. That's how much they're adding modern like where it was like spinning out ten arrows a second and it's, and, it, and like there was like sound effects of like arrows going through solid rock, like you would see bullets in a modern movie go through rock and like and I'm like, oh. Oh, we gotta talk about the action. It blows. This movie sounds like it should have been called Anachronism 2020. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, the action in this movie is so boring, people. It is, like, standard as it gets. Everything is, like, I, I just... I'm sorry. <laughs> He's worked up, guys. He was... He was... See, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm getting a little flicklipped. Sometimes it's nice to miss a movie. Like, yeah. you ever have that? You're, like, excited for a movie, but then you can't go see it that way because you don't have money or you have to work or too busy or whatever. Like, and then you hear the reviews and it, like, wasn't good. And you're like, oh, that's $13 that I can spend yeah. upon alcohol and will probably actually be slightly healthier for me than watching that bad film. Bad films can be horrible for your health. Mm. That is a fact that I just made up and called a fact anyway. Yeah. Uh, real quick, I just want to give a shout out to people who are joining us in on the live stream. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Jess. Uh, hey, Liz and James. Thank you guys all for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, the, the, the action in the film, uh, getting back to that, the action is, is just boring and bad. There's no, there's no memorable action. Well, there is one memorable action scene, but it's memorable because it, it they're, they're like in a, not a car chase, a carriage chase. And there's a lot of bouncy, shaky cam. And I'm just like, this is fucking frustrating. It's just nothing connects. And I just, I'm just going to blow through the last little bit to talk about it. Um, and even the acting. The acting is subpar. And you've got some really good actors in this film. Taron Edgerton, who most people know from the Kingsman movies, he's a good, young, talented actor. I, I feel like he hasn't had another movie that hit the same high as the first Kingsman movie because the second Kingsman movie was just like... I didn't enjoy it. Uh, um, Jamie Foxx, he's a good actor. Ben Mendelsohn, who I like once again, he's a really good actor. Um, Eve Hewson, who plays Marion, I'm not familiar with her. I don't know what other stuff she's been in. I mean, I'll take a quick look and let's... Yeah, I have not seen anything else she's been in. Yeah, I have not seen anything else she's been in. Um, nothing really special about her acting. Um, oh. ja- Jamie, Jamie, sorry. Jamie Dornan, who, play, uh, who plays Will Scarlet in the film. Once again, I only know him from the Fifty Shades movies, and that movies don't make anyone look good. Um, uh, seriously, like you got all these good actors in here, and it's just like none of them are going because I'm just I'm blaming the director. I'm blaming. I, I I feel like I'm blaming the director. I'm blaming the writers who are. Let me go through these writers. Uh, okay, writing credits: Ben Chandler, David James Kelly, and. Yeah, so, yeah, screenplay by Ben Chandler, uh, David James Kelly, and Ben Chandler, uh, yeah, did the story. So just nothing in this movie is coming together. It is just bad. It was, oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to go into a quick spoiler, a couple quick spoilers, because this movie is so bad. Like, spo- He's uh, going into spoilers for you, the audience. Yes. Because if he spoils it, you'll be even less tempted yeah. to waste your money on it. Because, surprise, I don't recommend you see this fucking film. <laughs> I don't fucking recommend it a bit. Okay, so a couple spoilers. So, one little John, aka um, Jamie Fox. There's a point in the film where he gets his hand cut off, right? And he just kind of like wraps it up, and then he's under. And then he stows away on a ship. It takes three months to get to England, so he's really just should, they should have been festering and shit like that. He finally gets back. Him and Robin, they meet up. He's like, I'm going to train you how to like fight like I do because Jamie Foxx is like a ninja from the Middle East or something. I don't know. It's weird. Um, and and he just has bandit. And then out of nowhere, he creates like this big metal nub thing to put over it. And he heats it up real quick. And he just like during the during the training montage, they're just training like Robin's like arrow, arrow, arrow. And like Ugh, lifting heavy stuff to get stronger. And then out of nowhere, Jamie Foxx takes his cut off nubby arm and sticks it into like the hot man. It's like, ah, and then right back to the training sequence. And I fucking laughed in the middle of it because it just comes out of nowhere. Like he's trying to be so manly, like burning the metal onto my nub. And that's like that. It's, it's just, ah. 
I am man. <laughs> and then later in the film, I am Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, they're already rich. Taking yeah. most of DC, why not? Why not yeah. steal a little from Marvel too? They're the right. ones that do well. And if they had stolen more from Marvel. This movie might have been yeah. better. And here's the thing. this: this next part was fucking hilarious. So there's a part later in the film where the good guys uh, 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 pour out a line of like oil across a road and set it on fire to make this big wall of fire, so the bad guys can't like go that way, right? So Ben Mendelsohn, who plays, you know, the Sheriff Nottingham, he gets his, like, guards, right, who all have these big, like, like metal riot shields almost. They get together, they go up to the wall of fire, and then somehow together put the shields down and not, like, push to, like, scrape away the oil so it can't light. They literally push the fire open like it's a fucking swinging doors on a saloon. That's not how fire works! <laughs> And it wasn't like the scene where, like, the, where, like, they were pushing and the fire went under them. No. They literally caused the fire to bend. What the fuck is going on? What is happening? You don't bend fire unless you're the fucking Avatar. That's not how it fucking works. The fuck? I'm supposed to fucking ignore you guys bend fire? Fuck you. Fuck you with a brick. Oh, fuck. Okay, I think this is officially my favorite movie review. Like, I actually love this film, and I'm disappointed that I did not see it with you just because I missed this live in action. I missed your outrage, your disdain, your pure hatred and befuddlement. You want to hear Rocky review this movie? <laughs> yes, I do. Yes, I do. Uh, uh, yo, can I get a refund? <laughs> That's the whole review. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my, me and my wife, we spent money on this movie, and it, it's not good. You know, I, I mean, I mean, why? I, you know, and I, I, I've sat through my own movies, and you know, and all of them are good. You know, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know. I'm not, you know, I'm not proud of it, but shoot, you know, stop him. My mom will shoot it. Happened, you know, and I gotta live with that. But uh. my favorite part of uh, that review was that Rocky is bringing his dead wife to a viewing of Robin Hood. He keeps it. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. Good catch. <laughs> People are like, how's Rocky doing? Not that good. <laughs> I think that. <laughs> I think that brain tumor he got in the fifth film is back. It just is back now, and he's just fucking with him. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, Robin Hood, twenty eighteen, starring like once again. I hope Taron Edgerton finds another good uh, movie because I, I like him. He, he seems like a really cool guy. I just oh the my. The first Kingsman was pretty good. Yeah, the first Kingsman, second Kingsman. Uh, we'll talk about that someday, but not tonight. <laughs> anyway. Uh, but yeah, so back, I, I love in an interview when people asked him like, you know, why are people going to like this movie? And Taron Edgerton, he 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 just said in like with maybe like, like it's because it's not like the other Robin Hood movies, and that's what people are going to like about it. Okay, what does that mean? Like you know, an actor knows they're in a shit film when that's what they say in an interview. Like he knows it. He knows it's like oh fuck, well, oh what could Kingsman two been better? I'd had that to fall back on. But he doesn't. God damn it. All right. Anyway, moving can, on. Can we create an end credit scene where it's just like uh, T Terrence Edgington and Rocky having a conversation? Uh, I don't know about oh, sandwiches. Oh, oh my something? god! It would have been great if, like, at the end of the movie, Sylvester Stallone shows up and he's like, "Oh my god, King Richard, <laughs> back from the Crusades." <laughs> Uh, uh, yo, what the fuck happened to my kingdom? What's going on? <laughs> oh, I hope our audience joins us because I am just, I am just joy on the inside. My heart is like a small child with a teacup Pomeranian. Yeah. All right, but anyway, let's uh, let's let's move away from this this sad sad <laughs> thing. Let's move on. Let's, to let's move past this. Let's just let's let's just keep just keep swimming. Let's just yeah. keep swimming. Don't look back. Right. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, uh, yeah. Let's move on to our final movie review this week. Um, I'm curious here because okay, so I expected. I'm the person who watches previews, and I'm like, 
I have a pretty good idea how this movie's gonna be. Like, like I mean, and again, you're you're right that uh, sometimes, in fact, despite my inability to show up on time to things, I love trailers because that is often the best part of a movie. Like the movie could be shit, but like those five trailers in the beginning, even if. The movies end up being bad. Those trailers could be badass. <laughs> I thought I, I had a good feeling about Creed 2. I had a bad feeling about Robin Hood. But this last one, I don't know. This <laughs> last one, is I, I heard good things about the original. I uh, didn't, didn't see it. I can't remember. I feel like this is not made by one of my favorite uh, movie companies, but in fact, <laughs> one of their major competitors. This is DreamWorks, right? Uh, DreamWorks or Pixar? This is... Oh, shit. I forget. Um, Pretty sure it's DreamWorks. Crap. I didn't look at that. All right. Oh, whatever. Look. Fuck it. Let's go to... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Ralph breaks internet, a.k.a. Wreck-It Ralph 2. So uh, this film, uh, in the first movie, we met Wreck-It Ralph, a character who is the bad guy from an old arcade game at uh, in an arcade called... I think it's called Litwax. Um, but the only thing is, like, we see all these char- these video game characters, they're alive, they exist in their own games, and they meet up when the arcade shop closes at the end of the night. And we meet Ralph, who, even though he's the bad guy from his game, he's not actually a bad guy. He, that's just the role he plays in his video game. And throughout the course of the movie, he tries to prove that he's actually a hero. And he meets uh, Vanellope, who's a new game character from the new game that just got brought into the arcade. They form a friendship, and they help each other kind of achieve their goals, but not exactly the goals they're that Ralph maybe necessarily was out to be in the first place, where he more the the first film is more about self respect. It's learning to like who you are and not necessarily worry about what other people think about you. I love how the first film basically is just like Gary Oldman if he were a video game character instead of uh, an actor. Like, no, dude, no, look, look at you. You're like, oh, he's actually a decent person. He just plays a bad guy. Look at the first 20 years of Gary Oldman's acting career. <laughs> like, no, I can just list off Lost in Space. He's the villain. Air Force One. He's the villain. Uh, the Fifth Element. He's the villain. Uh, and all those villains were all different and distinct. That's what that's what Gary Oldman. In The Professional. Yeah. He. Oh gosh, The Professional. The Professional is one of those movies that, like, if I catch it on, I I might just watch like that. That ending. A present. Oh, oh, hold on. I have not seen The Professional since I was a kid, so my memories of it are very vague. So. That's actually a- okay. Okay, you know what? Just watch. Just fucking yeah. watch it. Okay, like Gary, uh, Sheen, and I watched it. I think when it was on Netflix, like a couple of years back. Gary, Gary Oldman. He's just. Uh, he's also. If you've ever seen uh, True Romance, it is uh, a. I think Oliver Stone might have directed, but I believe. Tarantino wrote the movie. Or I was gonna say ninety two, early nineties. It uh, has a loaded cast, starting Christian Slater and yeah. is it Melanie Griffith? No, Christian Slater, Patricia Arquette, Patricia Arquette. Dennis Arquette. Hopper, uh, Gary Oldman, Brad Pitt, Val Kilmer, and uh, who? Wait, who is it? I believe you left out Christopher Walken, yes, James he's... Gandolfini. Yeah, here we go. Now I got the full cast list. There we go. Yeah, yes, it, yeah. it's it's a ridiculous. Uh, Gary Oldman plays essentially the bad guy that instigates everything in that movie. But so Gary Oldman, and I'm going to shut up in like 30 seconds so we can go back to what you meant to talk about. But yes. Gary Oldman was villains for like the first 20 years of his career. And then he got cast in Harry Potter 3, The Prisoner of Azkaban. And as someone like myself, who at the time when I went to see that movie, only because I had an advanced screening ticket three weeks ahead of time, and my little brother loved the film, so I took us both to see it just to be a good brother. A rare thing for me. Better son than brother, and we've just established not that great a son. Anyways, I showed up and I was like, oh, Gary Oldman is the bad guy. This makes sense. The world is as I know it. Everything is in its proper place. And then the twist when it turns out Sirius Black was not the bad guy. My head nearly exploded. I understand that. I guess I think I got the timeline and my initial head wrong. I think uh, Batman Begins had come out prior to that. So he'd already been Commissioner Gordon. But still, he was uh, like, I, af, af, after that, I half expected Commissioner Gordon to turn evil in the second or third movie because Gary Oldman's playing him. <laughs> Yeah, no, Gary Oldman's one of those actors, like, and uh, he did, he won, uh, didn't he win the Oscar last year for when he was playing, uh, was it Winston Churchill? 
He might have. I think I'm, he did. Yeah. I, I believe it. Yeah. But anyway, uh, back to Ralph Breaks the Internet. So, like, you know, uh, so th- in this movie, uh, Ralph and, Penel- and Penelope are now, you know, uh, in the arcade. And life is pretty good for Ralph. He's got a best friend. You know, the other game characters to show him, you know, are more respectful of him because they, they realize, you know, they, they were mistreating him in the previous film. And he doesn't, you know, as long as he's got Penelope, he's happy. But then Penelope's game ha- uh, breaks. Uh, part of the hardware breaks. And the owner of the shop is can't afford to buy the replacement part. So he's thinking about like sending the game away. If that happens, that means all the characters in the game are going are gonna to not have a home. They're all going to get deleted. So Ralph and Vanellope head onto the internet to try to find the piece, buy it, and have it sent to the arcade so they can keep the game. Now, nice uh, premise. Yeah. Uh, now, John C. Riley once again returns as Ralph and Sarah Silverman as Penelope. I believe you mean John Criley. Just... <laughs> Just John Criley, who I kind of met one time. <laughs> I'm, I'm really interested to uh, hear how you kind of meet someone. So I got to make it quick because I want to finish this review up. Um, so me and my buddy Mike were out at a restaurant one time. And we were just hanging out, eating, drinking, you know, nothing. And all of a sudden we see this guy with a big beard like walk by, by us. And we both looked at the dude and then we looked at each other and was like, that dude kind of looks like John C. Riley, but with like a big beard. And he's like, yeah, that does look like John C. Riley. And all of a sudden we see all these people starting to walk over to this guy and talking to him. And it's like, oh my God, dude, I love you so much. And we start looking at him like, holy shit, that is John C. Riley. And we're like, now, here's the catch. Neither one of us talked to him. No, we were too, we were too fucking starstruck. I didn't want to talk to him. I mean, I wanted to talk to him, but I'm like, I have this thing where I can't meet celebrities. Like, I don't go to, like, when you know when you go to the convention and you walk up to a celebrity, get in line, get your autograph or picture? I don't do that. I can't meet these people. I'm really fucking weird about Did it. Did I ever tell you about the time that I met uh, the uh, pop punk band All Time Low? I do not, but... Well, you have to review a movie, so you'll have to hear about it another time! There we go. But anyway, so the movie's really cool. I mean, the animation is very nice, just like in, in the previous one. Everyone's got their own, like, dimensions that fits with the aesthetic of their different game. Um, the internet uh, is presented as, like, this giant, endless, technologically advanced city. Um, people on the internet, when you're... Oh, like, they have these, like, little avatars on the internet that look like Funko Pop figures. Um, so, like, when you're, like, if you're on the internet... You know, you, you, you like you're represented on there when you go from we, uh, website to website, and so many different online uh, websites and companies are in this movie. You see Twitter, you see Snapchat, you see Google. Uh, you, like, if you name it, it's probably in there, whether it's like focused on or not. IMDb is briefly seen um, all over the place. There is one weird thing though. They go to this one website that is like a you know mock YouTube. It's called BuzzTube instead. And I don't know why they just couldn't show YouTube because they show Google in the movie and Google owns YouTube. So I don't know why they just weren't allowed to use YouTube, but it was kind of weird. But still, it's really, uh, and they meet a whole bunch of, of uh, characters. They meet a character named, uh, what was it, Nose, Nosemore, who is basically like a, 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 a search engine. He's like a, a Google knockoff, which I'm assuming he's a parody of Ask Jeeb. Um, but yeah, and uh, while they're in there, they they get to this one online video game called uh, this thing was called Slaughter Race, and they meet Gal Gadot's character uh, Shank, who's one like the, the character in the video game. And Penelope loves this game, like you know she um, she because it's a racing game. Because at her her the racing game that she comes from, all the levels and characters have been unlocked. And this game is new and different and expansive, and she like really gets a kick in it. And Penelope starts to question whether or not she wants to go back to the arcade, and that's where a lot of the story Story starts to come from where Ralph, you know, Vanellope is his best friend. She means the world to him. And there's and he's trying to get her back and fix her game, but he's focusing so much on like, you know, doing what he believes is the right thing to do to maintain their friendship. He doesn't really see it. He's not listening to her. And that is a, a, a part of the theme of the film is friendship and things that can break up a friendship because it's as a film goes on as things start to get a little out of out of hand so and i I think that's a good message for kids like saying you know like you guys can be friends but you know you gotta you know be aware that you don't have to do all things the same way you know there can be you know you can each everyone go off and do their own thing um now one of the things about the film that 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 does bother uh, bother me a bit i i do feel that the film is like a little too long because there are places there are points in the film that i feel like just kind of drag on and uh really they could have just just got on with it like there's certain, certain points where i'm like can we just like get on you know get on the way here um 
Also, there you see this in the trailer where Vanellope goes to the Disney website and she meets all the Disney princesses. Now, a fear that people had was because this, you know, Disney's behind this film, uh, that they were going to focus way too much on Disney, that they were going to be on the Disney website all too long. Uh, but no, honestly, they don't spend that much time with the Disney stuff. And honestly, every moment with the Disney princesses is hilarious. It's very funny, a lot of fun. They make fun of some of the Disney princess tropes. Like, it really is. You see some of it in the trailer, but other stuff, it, it's just really funny. Um, so uh, the film doesn't really have much of a villain because it's really more of a, a character study of, you know, uh, Ralph and Penelope. But anyway, so would I recommend this film? Um Yes, I am going to give it a recommendation. I don't think it's as good as the first one. Uh, like I said, this one, I think what really holds this, the film back is that it drags certain points and it can make it film a little, little aimless at times. So I'm still going to recommend the film because I think the goods outweigh the bads. But uh, yeah, so that is my review of Wreck-It Ralph 2. All right. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in tonight. Um, you know, once again, thanks to the River's Edge Network for hosting us. Um, if you really do uh, enjoy our podcast, please consider donating to our Patreon, patreon.com slash P.O. Vincent. We'd appreciate anything you guys throw us over there. Um, and, uh, Eric, anything you want to throw out before we head out? Your hair looks amazing. You just look adorable. I just kind of want to pinch your cheeks right now. You can. Now. Do you want? Do you want to? Quick, quick, quick. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, that was that was completely that was worth good. it. That was just beautiful as it looked. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you guys next Thursday with with movie news and a new movie review. I'm Vincent. Take it easy.